Good morning everyone. Well, a lot's changed since the last time I spoke to you. Um, I know the last video was a little bit of a walkthrough to show you what we've done. Um, and it's coming on really nice actually. You know, we're starting to get with furniture in. It's, it's really starting to feel like we're home now, which is good. Still have to get the uh, the oven and the hob fitted. I'm sick of eating ready meals with both. Oh, uh, Karen likes to cook and I like to eat it. As you can probably tell. But hey ho. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start trying doing more videos on how we're actually doing stuff um, because you know people have been asking for it and that's the type of thing I'm interested in as I've said on previous videos we just haven't had the time to do it lately because it's just videoing takes quite a bit of time it's not the editing so much it's, it's doing the videos so there's been a rush to get stuff done to actually get we're comfortable so we can actually work from the boat etc so that's starting to settle down he says uh, now so i'm going to start taking more footage of, of us doing stuff since we've actually um moved everything on the boat we've noticed the boat is slightly not trimmed correctly this is normal they put ballast in the bottom of the boat it's normally flagstones building bricks that kind of thing uh, which keeps the boat relatively flat. It tends to be slightly higher at the front, uh, t um, but that's the way, the way it is. Um, I'm not 100% sure why that is, to be honest, but uh, it tends to be the way it is. Um, once, obviously, you move everything on it, washing machines, you put a shower in, that way to turn that thing. Uh, obviously, the kitchen units, the bed, these things start to make the boat sit not true, if you like. So... We knew this would happen. We've tried to be sensible about putting the washing machine on this side, the shower on the other side. But, but still, you'll never get it right. You know, you can't exactly weigh everything. So there's always a slight bit of adjustment to do. So I'm going to be trimming the boat today. Um, I'm doing that via cutting access holes. This is a, uh, there's two reasons why I'm doing this. Firstly, um, so I can check the bilge, the bit under the floor, between the floor and the metalwork, if you like, to make sure it's dry. Um, but also so I can move ballast around yeah, as much as I can. Um, I've already put an access hole in under the bed at the front, at the stern, just to the left of the water tank, so I can check that. I got access to that, which is great. Just cut a board out, put a hole in it, put some struts under so it sits flush, um, and I can just put my finger in and pull that board out when I need to to, to inspect the, the, the bilge. Uh, also, because there's a hole in it, gives a little bit of ventilation which is not a bad thing you know so movement of there tends to stop damp doesn't it so i'm just doing this at the front as well so um i'm going to show you what i mean uh, about the boat i'm going to overlay a picture now you can probably see the boat sits slightly to the port to the left but put to the port side um just slightly but it's enough it makes a difference you can tell when you're walking on a boat it tilts more to the left it's uh so it's a bit disconcerting. So I'm going to be moving some of the ballast to the starboard side, the right hand side as you're facing forward, um, to try and level that out. And I'm probably going to have to buy some extra ballast to do that. This is completely normal with a sailor wave boat. They don't know how you're going to fit the boat out, so they just ballast it so it sits right when you sail it away. It's the best they can do at the end of the day. So you can see from the picture it is slightly to the to, to the, the port side so i'm going to show you the picture uh show you the bit where i'm going to cut the board out of i've removed the steps it's the first sunny day for a while it's been foggy raining i'm sure you're aware to the pretty much whole of the uk so i'm going to switch the camera around and show you what i'm doing okay so here we are at the uh the stern of the boat in our little utility area as i, I call it because we've got our little clothes rail and everything we're going to be putting shelving in round here you can see karen started to paint it i've just got a peel of stickers off um we're going to be putting shelving in for boots and that kind of thing here this is where the stairs go and you can see here i've marked out i've already made two of the cuts here i've marked out a square that i'm going to be cutting out i purposely did it done it here because this is where the supports of the stairs go around so there's going to be no huge weight on the center bit but i'm going to be putting once i cut it out i'm going to put some pieces of wood in so that this board can go back in and sit against these pieces of board so it's going to be secure we're not going to be standing or, or anything but it would be fine if we did so i'm just using the multi-tool this is pretty much the boat as best friend really you can use this for so much um, I'd never used one before, but I've seen a few YouTubers use them for, for taking rust off, 
for, for, for cutting little chocks of wood out so you can get pipes in and stuff. Um, really useful tool, really noisy, but um, and it allows you to make some really nice straight clean cuts. Um, you can't really get a jigsaw in there unless you shorten the blade because obviously there's, there's bricks or whatever under there. So I'm going to get this cut um, and then we'll get the board up and see what's underneath. Hopefully no water. And this, this is really exactly what this tool is made for. It's for making plunge cuts, uh, which you can't really do any other way that I'm aware of. You can use a hammer and a chisel, but I'm not that accurate with that. It's going to take time, taking little bits of material out. This you can see, you get different shaped blades. This one's just got a flat, almost like a chisel blade, but it's got little teeth across the front. And basically all it does is that really quick it's an oscillating multi-tool and you can get different attachments for this for for taking grout out of tiles um these are really useful if you you know you're cutting a box out to put a, a plug socket in it can make the cut really accurately cut and trim so you can fit cornicing in or skirting boards that kind of thing really useful this has got to be probably apart from you drilling me 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 screwdriver me impact driver this has been the tool i've used the most it's really good, wasn't too expensive, um, it's got LED lights, blades are quite reasonably priced, these blades fit on a lot of the different manufacturers because there is different fittings, so be wary of that if you do look to get one of these, okay, there is different fittings. Yoruba, I'm probably saying that's wrong, um, but these ones fit, tend to fit most of the manufacturers blades, and as I say, they're all make are really good, uh, this is the first, this is the only blade I've used, and I've been using it since I actually made the steps. So really good. Let's get this last cut made. Let's see what's under this. As I say, hopefully no water. Okay, moment of truth. So Fingers crossed, there's no water under here. Okay, now that might sound ridiculous, but remember, I did the plumbing. <laughs> Not the central heating, but I've done the water pipes, etc. So let's hopefully the build is dry. Um, let's find out. Dry! Oh, you know, I'm not overdoing this. That is such a relief because with doing the speed fit, I mean, a lot of you will be laughing at this, but you know, the, the speed fit is a new thing to me. Um, and yes, you know, I, I really belt and, belt and braced all the connections, but to see that this is dry is huge because this is where the water would come to. This is the the, the, the stern of the boat this traditionally this is sitting lower than the front of the boat so any water would naturally come between these breeze blocks these cement building blocks or whatever and it would be here because of course here is where you've got the metal bulkhead that goes through to the the engine base so this is where the water would be um i'm not sure if the water can get through into the engine bay but there is certainly i mean the engine bilge area is completely bone dry um so that that is such a relief this is what they've used for the ballast in my boat. Um, you can see it's just concrete blocks. 
um, I'm going to be trying to shift some of these across if I can. I'm not sure how much wiggle room I'm going to have with this, but any weight I can move across is going to help. I'm also going to be trimming um, in another way, which I'll explain in a minute. So I'm going to get this tidied up um, and then we'll get a hole drilled in the middle of here so I can get it in and out in the future easily enough. Um, and I may... We'll see how far I can move these because I was going to put some wood struts here, so screwing them in here so that they stuck out, so that this board could sit on them. But it depends on how much I can move these because otherwise, I mean, the board sits on top of these quite nicely. So I'll see if I can shift them. So all we're doing here, I know this is kind of obvious, but all I'm doing here is just moving the weight slightly to the starboard side, uh, just to make the boat sit a bit more level. So it's a quite hard to move, but we'll do our best. You can also see on the bottom here, just to mention, um, I don't know if you can see it very well, but black paint, um, and that's what they've painted the bilge area with when they've actually fabricated the boat because of course you don't see this area very much I mean it could be 5, 10, 20, 30 years you know if you're lucky you might never never have a reason to go in here apart from checking you know so it just protects the steel work because underneath there is the canal yeah or the marina water so it just protects the steel from rusting because you will you will get occasional moisture in here. This is why I'm trying to put some air holes in to get that circulation front and rear, just to reduce that as much as we can. That's the best way to do it. And me as well, a lot of people will, again, belt and brace it, um, put an automatic bilge pump somewhere like right here. And all that means is it's automatic. So there's a little float, kind of thing that's in your toilet that turns the water off and on to fill your toilet up. But when the float goes up, it knows there's water's in there, it floats, keys in the name I guess, and it starts pumping the water out, so it's automatic. So that's quite a good idea, I might do that in the future, certainly not today, because I haven't got one. Let's try and get some of these bricks further across, I'll see what I can get hold of. getting rid of any wood shavings as well because anything in the builds like wood like that is absorbent can obviously absorb moisture and, and cause all the problems that come with that so it's best to try and keep this area as clean as possible as you can imagine there we go so there's our bilge access done um you can see that the i put a hole in obviously so i can get that that board in and out nice and easy remember the steps are going to be sitting up here this is where the supports are so I don't have to worry about any excessive weight here it doesn't matter though I mean this is actually sitting on top of the the ballast the breeze blocks as you saw so it's you know you could jump up and down on it it's fine um, you can see the board is sitting about two mil all the way around lower than the rest of the floor I'm not bothered about that. As I say, I'm going to be tiling the area with some sticky tiles. Um, and the only thing that's going to be sitting on top of that is my toolboxes. This is the storage under my stairs. I'm not bothered about that. So it doesn't have to be perfectly level. We shifted a bit of weight across um, to the starboard side. So that should make a little bit of difference. And I'm going to have to try uh, and put some other ballast in. Now, I'll just turn the camera around. There we go, that's better. Now, what I intend to use for the, the rest of the ballast is, you can use um, various things. Um, bricks, standard house bricks are not a good idea because they are designed to, to absorb about 
40 50 percent moisture it's, it's the idea that's how they work so you normally use um, in, industrial bricks I think they're called um, and they are apparently only supposed to absorb about four four and a half five percent of, of water and that's what you want because you don't want obviously bricks absorbing moisture and then obviously you get all the problems that you have with moisture on a boat you know so I am going to be using either uh, concrete flagstones, I'm not sure about that at the minute, they're quite expensive. I'm looking at using maybe bagged sand, you know, commercial sand, building sand, because it's heavy. It comes in large flat bags, because what I'm tending to do is actually, under the kitchen here, you actually have, um, oh, I'm not showing it very well, am I? Just one second. Under here, you have obviously the kickboards. Underneath, underneath here so I can actually take them out and slide ballast under these kitchen units here um, that's probably going to be the easier option at this point so I can put a couple of bags here under the kitchen units I also intend to put a bag in the engine bay again on the starboard side and maybe one in the forward locker again with it being a bag of sand it'll crush into the corner quite well it's heavy it's a sealed bag so it'll be nice and dry. Um, so that's the idea at the minute. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to have to pop off to the, the hardware store and actually get some of that. Um, it's about three stone a bag. Three stone. I'm figuring on adding about 12 to 18 stone on the starboard side. We'll see how we go. I'm going to put uh, 12 in and, and, and see how it is. If I need to go and buy some more bags, I can. Uh, and we're just going to, basically, it's as simple as looking to see how the boat sits in the water. You get off the boat, you sit behind it like that picture I just showed you, and you look to see if it looks straight. You know, don't, don't use the other boats. You're using the horizon kind of thing, and just see if it looks straight. There is other little indicators about which parts of the metal work are under the water at the back. You know, if one side's slightly out and the other side's slightly under, well, obviously it's not trimmed right, is it? So that's what I'm going to be doing next. I'll come back to you once I've got the ballast and we'll see if it works. It's, it's bound to, you know, it's physics, isn't it, at the end of the day? I'll see you soon. So there it is with the ballast in, bit of an update. You can see the boat's sitting a lot more flatter now. I'll just zoom in a bit. You can see at the bottom there, on the left and right of the, the button, um, you've got them little metal bits that stick out there to help you get out the water in an emergency. But you can see they're sitting under the water equally now, uh, whereas before the one on the right was, was out of the water a bit and the one on the left was under. So the ballast seems to be working well. Um, I'll show you what ballast I've put in. So I'll just show you in the engine bay. You can see what we've done. It's very temporary, but uh, we'll just put basically four bags of sand on the uh, uh, starboard side of the boat, uh, at the rear, at the stern. And that's equivalent to between 13 and 14 stone, those four bags. Um, they're in their own bags, they're sealed, they're dry, so it's not a, an issue with damp or anything. But they've made, they are what's made the difference. I'm going to have a look at how to, to secure them or, or maybe look at using something else. But that's what we've done so far and it appears to be working. It's made a heck of a difference just walking around the boat. So let's turn the camera around. So yeah, that's what we've done so far. Uh, I'll keep you updated on it, but that's a bit of a quick fix at the moment. If you've got any suggestions feel free to leave comments but that's fixed it for the time being could be an issue when we're moving because these things can move but i'm going to look into this a bit more you know for first boat as they say so um see you soon everyone